Hey folks, welcome back to War Thunder for once. So recently there was an update to War Thunder for the Alpha Strike DLC. For the most part, I just don't really care about any of the changes that have come with that patch, but anyone that's been with the channel for a while will know that the Javelin holds a special place in my heart, and you may have noticed if you've been on the homepage of the channel that the banner art, and for the longest time the channel's outro, was a picture of a Javelin. And for me, the Javelin is kind of what got me into like deeply diving into aerial combat. And the reason for that is because when War Thunder added it, in 2019, which in my brain is quite recently still, but it was actually five fucking years ago. That's kind of horrifying to think about. It was kind of a meme, it was kind of dead on arrival because it came with a patch which I believe was called Supersonic and the F100 and the MiG-19 came along with it, which both are capable of supersonic flight in, you know, level flight without having to dive or anything. And the Javelin is not only incapable of supersonic fly, but it can rip its own wings off, at least in this game, because of the engine thrust it has. So it's actually limited to a subsonic speed by its fabulous, essentially, which makes it just crap. <laughs> and I thought, you know what, if I can do well in this thing with a handicap, right, I'm it, the, the satisfaction so must be pretty high. And, and it was, so I got Go quite good with it. It's been up. Nice. Did you fucking uh, see that reversal? That was fucking that amazing. Was... If you go back on the channel, I've got like maybe 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 maybe videos on it. There was a point where it got a pretty ridiculously overpowered road dog on site. And uh, these days it's just sort of shit. But anyway, in this patch, they've updated the visual model, which has been wrong for the longest time. And I actually went to a museum once to see a real javelin in person just to take a picture to prove to Guardian that the modelling of its tail section was wrong. They finally made it right and they also updated some of the flight modelling stuff so what I'm going to do is show you some footage that I got from before the patch dropped because I was aware this change was coming and then we'll look at how it performed after the patch dropped and see if it was better before or after. Now, unfortunately, the Javelin, even in reality, was kind of dead on arrival. It was just shit from the get-go. It was never really a frontline, top-spec, competitive aircraft. It would have been airborne around the time that like, the, the earlier MiG-21s and the, the Draken and stuff like that were being used, and obviously they are infinitely better than it in every conceivable margin. So it was never good, but because it was so shit, it had a very, very, very short service life, which means that there's not a lot of information available about it. So I actually have no idea whether the flight model was accurate before or whether it was accurate after. I just know that it's hard to do well in and that makes it satisfying to fly, at least for me. So we'll show you the, the footage from before um, and then the footage from after. And I'll also show you a little clip of how the tail has been updated. Hope you enjoyed the video folks, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Okay, so first protocol, this is how the pre-patch tail section used to look. Only the little tabs on the ends move, like they're like the trim tabs, not the actual tail itself. And this is what it looks like now. The entire tail section moves, this is correct to life. The blistering irony of this is that you'd expect the new version to have better nose authority, but it's actually the other way around. So this is pre-patch, and watch how rapidly I'm able to snap my nose down to try and get a snapshot on that 163, compared to this, which is post-patch, and I'm trying to get my nose on a Saab 105. I'm nosing down, this is the best I can get out of it compared to that flick that you saw against the 163. I'm actually really struggling to actually get hits at all here compared to being able to just snap the nose around and it, it was much more responsive before. And I'm not even going that fast, only about 350 knots. So the biggest thing they changed essentially was that the post-patch version of the Javelin compresses really quite hard. Whereas pre-patch, that 
never used to be an issue. So here's a pre-patch clip. We just merged with a, a G91 that's going for our surveillance plane. So he's not maneuvering in relation to us. He's not trying to get away from us. So I climbed up as we turned so that I could dive to get the speed back that I lost during the turn. We're going to get our speed so high through this dive that there's points where I have to pop the air brake to stop our wings from ripping off. But I'm still able to point my nose at him throughout the whole of this process. I'm really not struggling to stay nose hot. Like There are points where I'm choosing not to because I'm trying not to dive as hard as he is to prevent the wings from ripping off. But if I wanted to keep my nose pointed at him through this whole process, I would be able to do that without any problems. Comparing it to post pipes, we've got a Yak-38 up ahead, and the Yak-38 is not known for turning well to begin with, so this poses as like an extra good example. I'm doing about 500 knots in the dive here, having to come off the throttle all the way. And I'm pulling full back stick right now, and look how he's able to peel away from me. I had to have my air brake out through that as well, so that I wouldn't rip, because I can't use pull to offset speed anymore. Have to use the air brakes because I just do not have the nose authority to pull with anything at high speed. Look at the mess with my boy. So here's a pre patch clip where I'm booming through for speed and I can see there's two, three contacts behind me on that front that just came through in the other direction. Front of that pack is a Sea Vixen, so I know that's friendly similarly massive and probably has similar problems with dogfighting than me, except it doesn't have guns, so maybe a bit worse. The trailing thing looks like um, a MiG of some description, and in front of that is, is the same 163 that we saw in a clip from earlier. So here I'm carrying quite a lot of speed, but I have a lot of nose authority, I just misjudge my lead, so I pull up I'm actually intending to bleed speed here, so I'm climbing and pulling hard to bleed speed, and that lets me stay well inside this guy's turn, and he's been climbing through the whole thing as well. So he's now very slow, but I have massive amounts of nose authority at all speed ranges, so it's quite easy to pick him off. Here's another example pre-patch. So I'm heading towards the A point, and I spot a contact and the radar confirms that it's hostile. Now, it's much higher than me, and it's flanking left, but he doesn't know that I'm here. I don't want to pull too hard and bleed my speed off prematurely, especially because I have to climb as I follow, because I'll turn myself into a brick and then be just useless. As I get closer, it's a Q5 Phantom, which is a ground attack version of the MiG-19, and the MiG-19 is one of the most potent energy fighters in in this BR range by a significant margin, really it should be a much higher BR. I don't think it should be possible to encounter one in a javelin, so I don't want to get into a dogfight with this guy particularly, which is why I'm spamming off my missiles, especially given that I brought four instead of two, and they weigh like more than I do each, so they're not a great thing to look about, especially not if you're going to get into a turn fight with a far superior aircraft. He's climbing and turning. I don't want to keep him in the nose, I don't want to pull pure pursuit, I don't want to pull lead pursuit, I'm going to climb, because if I'm higher than him, I get energy to use, and if I don't pull super hard whilst I'm doing this, then I can retain some energy. He then continues turning, but because I'm now above him, as I turn to follow, I can dive, which means that my energy retention is about the same as it was, I'm not not gaining anything because I'm losing it from the turn, but I'm also not losing anything because I'm diving as I go. I'm not sure if he still has visual at this point because I've been kind of waving up and down behind him as he's been going, but at this point I am starting to lose energy again, so rather than diving further, there's no point in doing that. If I'm above him I have an advantage, so I'm going to flat turn whilst he continues to dive, and I think here he definitely has now lost visual on me. He zoom climbs back up, He's losing energy the entire time he's doing this, and I don't have to go up as far because I'm already up here. I do momentarily pull too hard and wing stall, which is what that flick over was, that was not me doing that. But I'm still holding enough energy to continue climbing up with him. And I'm now basically at stall speeds, but so is he. But I have better nose authority, just anyway, with the old Javelin flight model. And I perform better at low speed because I'm basically just a giant wing. 
that works because with this flight model, I can choose how much nose authority to apply to, to choose whether to bleed or maintain speed. This is post patch, and we're going to highlight how the nose authority is terrible at all speeds. So I'm diving on a guy in a cap zone. I have every advantage right now. I started with an altitude advantage, an energy advantage. I'm in a faster plane. I can climb faster. I can accelerate faster. I should just be able to follow this guy and stay on his six until he dies. But I don't have the nose authority to even pull with him through these lazy right hand turns that he's doing. So I'm, every time he pulls significantly, instead of following directly, I'm just climbing instead so that I can come up and over and do it again. So there's no way I'm following with that. So I'm going to come up, gradual climb, turn the energy into altitude. The slower I get, the more efficient my turn radius is so I can flip around and come back down on top of it. Except someone follows me up. So I flip around, I go vertical again in the hope that he'll have blood off more speed than me in the climb and maybe overshoot me. And I do manage to make him overshoot. So drop in the flaps here because the javelin's stall speed is actually really low. Don't have the nose authority or, or rudder authority or any kind of authority in order to get that shot. And now we've departed flight because I'm very, very slow. Raising the flaps so I don't rub them off. I can hear there's another guy with me. With the old javelin, I'd have had the nose authority here to have pulled this guy around a much, much earlier than I have done. And I nearly get this shot, but I didn't have the pull to actually give it. I didn't, I couldn't get him in the crosshairs properly because I can pull hard enough. So if I'd been flying the old version, I would have probably killed that guy then. Similar pre-patch setup this time. So I'm above and have the advantage over this guy that I'm tracking right now. Just like when we dived on the G91 at the beginning of the last engagement. I'm in the same exact scenario this time with this guy, except I'm not quite diving from as high up, but I'm hitting my max speed, I'm having to reduce throttle, so functionally it works out about the same. So I can only really see tracer fire and smoke trails at the moment. I know that someone is tailing someone, but at this point I'm not sure which one is which, because Clearly one must be friendly and one hostile. And around this point I realised that the tailor is actually a teammate. And the guy in the lead is a MiG-17. So we use all the speed to go up into altitude and I'm choosing not to pull hard because I want to retain the energy through it. With the change to the flight model you aren't given that choice anymore because pulling hard gives you nothing. So it is kind of a moot point. But we still have a reasonable amount of speed because I didn't bleed it all off by pulling too hard. At this point it, it probably would be quite similar flying the post-patch version because I'm, I'm, I'm purposely saving energy. So I can't climb with an X-17, especially not the, uh, the Limp 5 with the afterburner, so I use a missile on it. Looking behind I can see that there's a bunch of other things down there. I'm trying to ID what they are. And then I spot this other guy. So that, that is a MiG-17. So he's clearly the biggest threat. And here, I can choose to use my turn right to stay out of his nose. And I can stay slow on purpose to stay inside of his turn circle. And as long as I've got altitude, my energy stays fine because I can choose to dive to recoup it when I want to. Pop in the flaps because I'm going to try to nose up hard to bleed the speed off a lot to get him to pass in front and then use my nose authority to try and line him up for a snapshot. Which didn't quite work that time because the flaps kind of threw off the lift vector a little bit and I couldn't figure out where I was supposed to be. But watch how I'm able to wave my nose up and down as I spray to kill him on that one. And that would have never worked ever in the post patch javelin. So I kind of want them to revert the change. I know a lot of it is probably just familiarity for me, like I know what I'm doing with, with old Javelin, not new, because I've flown it for like hundreds of hours probably. But um, the new one is probably more realistic, and I just find that to be a little bit of a shame. Because I am all for realism, but I can't help but mourn what was lost, because the old version is very clearly better, in my opinion.
than the new one. That's not to say though that post patch you can't get a bit of a nostalgia hit for when things work how they would have before. So I'm very slow and I managed to get this guy to overshoot just because of how slow I am. Didn't have the ability to nose down to hit him as he passed in front, but he keeps reversing in front of me. And this is how you do well in the javelin, you rely on the enemy doing things wrong. Because if he had just literally kept turning in the same direction, out of blood my energy I've never been able to follow him. I don't have the attitude to dive to get a speed back and he would eventually have just come around and killed me. But because he kept turning in front of me, I was able to stay behind him because my energy state was in irrelevance and it's just a case of shooting until one of the rounds hits. So how do you actually use it properly now, given that it's being changed for the worse? Well, it performs best at high altitude because the afterburner means that it has more thrust than anything else does at altitude. And it also climbs really quite well, but only like how World War II prop climbs, like you have to do it gradually. If you zoom climb, you weigh so much, it's like a 20 ton plane, that you just become a brick instantly. So you've got to put it in like a 10 degree climb and redline your max speed the whole way and just do it that way. So that guy, we had, we had a head on merge. I didn't turn immediately, I kind of extended first because I wanted to get some separation so that when I climbed more vertically, the fact that I'm fat and slow wasn't going to matter as much because he'd be further away. And I also hoped that I'd have the space to actually complete that loop and kill him there. But now, my energy state is higher than his and I have more thrust and more lift at this altitude. So I'm going to basically just vulture above him. And every time he comes up to me, he'll end up losing speed. If I come down on him, I can get an angle, and if he comes up to me, he'll, he'll just give me more because he's not going to be able to match my performance at this altitude. The Javelin's stall speed is about 90 knots with landing flaps down, which is like the same as the first Spitfire almost in the UK tag tree, which is insanely, insanely slow for something this big. And people will just pass you by accident because they just physically can't go that slow themselves. So you have to make people climb for you, stall as they reach you, and then stall fight them at high altitude where your thrust and lift are far superior to theirs. But ultimately you are flying a boat that's massive, and if people know how to counter how you need to fly to do well, then it's extremely, extremely easy for them to kill you. And there's nothing you can do about it because if you're slow and they're behind you, it's almost impossible for them to miss. The amount of luck required to do well is is much higher than it is in other stuff. And yes, being a good pilot will certainly help, but it's so bad that a bad pilot can still defeat you by accident. Like, that's how bad the javelin is. I think it must have got its name because the engineers at Gloucester were joking about throwing it into the fires of Mount Doom, but they thought, well, we can't really call it the Gloucester throw. So they thought of a more grandiose method of throwing something. And, and now it's the javelin, because they want to javelin it into the fire of Mount Doom. I, I don't know how it ever actually became <laughs> an actual aircraft like it. It's just terrible. It's honestly terrible, but it is very satisfying when you do well. Also, I think if you learn it well enough to do well, and you can spot your own mistakes, then it will make you a better pilot, and there is a huge reward in that. And that's, like I said at the start of the video, that's where I got started in, uh, in figuring out like what you do and don't do, how to read, um, dogfight, NIS, <laughs> energy states, all that kind of stuff. The satisfaction is there if you can see past the frustration. So uh, I hope that you've learned something in this video, even if it's how to kill a javelin, and you've enjoyed it. And if you have, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more. You can support the channel by becoming a member or buying a model from Air Models. Or there's also that thanks tab that I keep forgetting to mention to remind people about. It's all just in the video description or at the bottom of the video. Play it. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching, thanks a lot for being here, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.